series. Though the words sequence and series are interchanged in everyday speaking, they have different meanings in mathematics. A series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. For example, we have a finite sequence, 2, 6, 10, 14. By the way, finite means that it is limited. Okay, so the sequence only has four terms in it. That would be a sequence as we list them here. A finite series is going to be taking those numbers in the sequence and adding them together, which will give you a grand total. In addition to having a limited number of terms, a finite sequence, we can also have an infinite sequence. Okay, this would be an infinite sequence. You got one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, dot, 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 because it goes on forever. And weirdly, we'll sometimes look at taking the sum of those sequences. Okay, as an infinite series, it would be one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus the next and the next and the next. And oddly, you can take the sum, which would be the series, you can take the sum of the infinite series, okay, you can add one half plus one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, and so on through all the terms that would follow, which goes on forever. You can do that and the answer may actually converge to a certain number versus going on to infinity. Sometimes we think if we keep adding on to something, it just has to get bigger. Okay, in this case, yes, it does get bigger, but it's going to be approaching a certain value. However, that's something we'll look at in a later video. As far as notation, what we're going to do is use capital S to represent a series or a sum. You can think of it as either way if you want. Okay, if Sn represents the sum of n terms in a series, then Sn can be expressed explicitly as Sn is equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus so on all the way until you get to Tn, however number of terms we're interested in adding together. What we're going to do next is develop a formula for the sum of a finite arithmetic series. By finite, we're looking at a series that has a limited number of terms in it. Okay, and we can express it like this. We can say that Sn, the sum of the series, is going to be equal to T1 plus T1 plus D, so D greater than the first term, plus T1 plus 2D, which is 2 greater than the first term. Okay, so as you're moving down the line, we're going to be increasing by amounts of D. We don't know how many terms that we actually have, we're just calling it N, so we could have a lot of terms in the middle there. But every time you move through the terms, you'd be increasing by D. So you could continue to show this as T1 plus 3D, T1 plus 4D, and so on. But if we skip all the way to the end here, whatever your last term is, you would call it Tn, okay? And the term that would be right before it would be valued as Tn minus D, so it's gonna be less. So you're increasing by Ds that direction, decreasing by Ds in that direction. Okay, and again, we don't know how many terms we actually have, so we're just gonna say dot, 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 that we could have a lot of terms in there, or maybe we don't. Okay, now how to develop a formula that would allow us to add all of these terms together without really needing to generate each of those terms. Here's the trick to it. What you're going to do is take Sn and you're going to add it to itself, but in reverse order. Okay, so here's Sn as written above, and here's Sn written backwards, and we're going to add them together here. Okay, on the left, when you add Sn plus Sn, you get 2Sn. All right, so here's the neat thing about when you add the right side in reverse order. You're going to get T1 plus Tn. Okay, you're going to get that sum. The next sum that you would get, so if you're adding vertically here, you're going to notice that we have a T1 plus D, and then you got Tn minus D. So that plus D and that minus D will actually cancel each other out, leaving you with the same thing that we got for the first two. You're going to get T1 plus Tn. Then the same thing's going to happen next here. You're going to have plus 2D and minus 2D, and they're going to cancel with each other. So you're going to get the same thing again. And it's just going to continue to do that all the way down the line. Even over here, you're going to have Tn minus D plus T1 plus D. The Ds will cancel, and you will get T1 plus Tn. And the same thing at the very end. In summary, what we can figure out here is that we have a lot of the same thing being added together. And using basic algebra, we could just express that sum, like each of these as a sum, multiplied by the number of times they appear. 
which is going to be n times. You're going to end up with a total of n of these because you have all the way starting from t1 to tn. So you're going to have a total of n of the same sums of the t1 and the tn. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 2sn. But if we're interested in solving for sn, what we need to do is divide everything by 2. So these will cancel and we end up with sn. The sum of a finite arithmetic series is going to be equal to n, the number of terms, multiplied by the sum of the first and last term divided by 2. You can even think of it as taking the first term and the second term and averaging them together. That would be adding them and dividing by 2, but then multiplying that average by the number of terms that we have. For example, one, we're going to find the sum of the first 25 terms of this arithmetic series. Okay, so first let's discuss that this actually is arithmetic. If you go from term to term, okay, 11 to 14, you're going to increase by 3. Going from 14 to 17, also plus 3, and also plus 3 from 17 to 20. Okay, so we have a common difference of 3. This is arithmetic. To figure out the sum of the first 25 terms, we're going to use our newest formula. Okay, so we could write S, let's call it S25 as the subscript, because we do want to get the first 25 terms. That would be equal to N times the sum of the first and last term divided by 2. Okay, so we're looking for S25. 25 is the N, so that means that this will be 25. The first term we've got, that'd be 11. The last term, that we're actually missing. Okay, but we do know that we're going to divide by 2, so we'll go ahead and fill that in. Okay, so as a little bit of side work, what we need to do is figure out what would be the 25th term. Now, previously, we had learned how to find a term that would be further down the line if you had an arithmetic series. And to do that, you would take t1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference d. Okay, so we have t1, right? That's 11. Uh, n minus 1 is going to be 24 because we want the 25th term. So it's going to be 24 times d, which is 3. Okay, so 11 plus 24 times 3 is 72. You add those together, you're going to get 83, which is going to go here. All right, so with a calculator, we can go ahead and add 11 and 83, which gives us 94. We can multiply that by 25, divided by 2, and the sum of the first 25 terms of this arithmetic series is going to be 1175, so 1,175. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how we would write a formula to figure out the sum of a finite geometric series. Let's begin with an outline of how this might look. The sum of the series Sn would be equal to T1, your first term, plus T1 times R. Okay, remember you got that common ratio that you're going to multiply each of the terms by to produce the next one. In this case, we call it R. So your second term here is T1 times R. Your second term is going to be T1 times R squared because you're going to be multiplying by another R. And then so on, all the way towards the end. Okay, and as you get towards the end, the very last term of your N terms that you've got is going to be T1 raised to the R N minus 1 power. Okay, it's not going to be raised to the n power because you've got that first term that had not been multiplied by r. The term that is before the last is going to be t1 times r to the n minus 2 power. Okay, so that'll take you back one term from this one. All right, so the trick to figuring out the formula for adding all of these terms together is to multiply the series Sn, multiply this by the common ratio r. In other words, what we're going to do is distribute an r to each of these terms that we've got. Once we have that, we're going to subtract it from the original. We're going to subtract it from that guy. All right, and all that I have outlined here. The top row is the original Sn, which is just what we've got up there. 
Underneath it, what I've done is I've multiplied everything by R. And I've also offset the right side because you're gonna see how things match up. All right, so for the left side, all you needed to do was multiply SN by R. So you get R times SN. For the right, when we multiply T1 by R, we get T1R, which is the same thing as the second term that we've got here. Okay, so instead of writing it underneath this, what I'm gonna do is offset it by one spot because it matches up nicely here. Okay, likewise, if I take the second term of the original series, okay, T1 times R, multiply that by an R, I get an R squared, which better fits this guy, so I'm gonna have it here. Okay, so everything is being offset. And as you go to the very end, as you go to the very end here, the last term, when you multiply that by an R, it's going to increase the exponent by one, which will change it to R to the N power, which you see here. Okay, and then this term, when you increase the exponent R by one, you get N minus one, which fits there. So everything has been offset. You now have a T1 without anything underneath it, and you've got this other term over here, T1 times R to the nth power without anything above it. Okay, so now when we subtract, with everything offset like that, if you subtract, and that would include distributing the negative of all these terms, these will cancel, these will cancel, these will cancel, these will cancel, and everything in the middle will cancel. And you're gonna be left with two things. You're gonna be left with a T1 here, and you're also gonna have the T1 times R to the nth power. But remember, all of these are being subtracted, so it's gonna be minus, it's gonna be minus T1 times R to the nth power. Okay, now on the left side, these don't just cancel out, right? They're actually different than each other, so we're gonna show them being subtracted. We've got SN minus R, times SN. And then with a little bit of factoring on both sides, we can clean this up pretty nicely and we can actually solve for just SN. So here, both of the terms have an SN. We can factor that out. We could write that as SN multiplied by one minus R. Think about distribution and how we could get back to this. Okay, but what we've done is factored out the SN. On the right, we can factor out T1. And if our goal here is to figure out what is SN, we'll do one more step, which is to divide by this binomial. And we get this. The sum of a geometric series is going to be equal to T1 times 1 minus R to the nth power divided by 1 minus R. All right, for example two, we're going to find the sum of the first 10 terms of the geometric series that starts like this. Okay, the sum of the first 10 terms. So we're going to be able to use the formula we just looked at the sum is going to be equal to T1 times 1 minus R to the nth power divided by 1 minus R. All right, so things that we need to get S10. We have to have the first term. We've got it. It's a 2. We have to have an R value. Okay, well, if this is a geometric series, what we could do is divide consecutive terms to get that R value. Okay, negative 6 divided by 2. So treat that as a negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is going to give you negative 3. 18 divided by negative 6 is also going to give you negative 3. And negative 54 divided by positive 18 will give you negative 3. So that will be our R value. Okay. Now, because it is a negative, let's be real careful here. Let's create some parentheses to put that in, and then we'll raise it to our nth power. Our nth power is going to be the number of terms that we're using which is going to be 10, we'll then divide by 1 minus negative 3. Okay, so on the bottom, the negatives are going to cancel. You are going to get 1 plus 3, which is 4. For the top, we're going to go to the calculator for this. But before I do that, I want to point out something first. We do have a negative 3, which is being raised to the 10th power. 
10 is an even number. That means that when you raise the negative three to the 10th power, that negative on its own is gonna cancel out. It has nothing to do with the one that's in front of it. These are not gonna cancel with each other. That one will cancel on its own. So we're still gonna end up with a one minus whatever that turns out to be, and that'll be a positive number. Okay, but we'll evaluate it in the calculator. All right, so in parentheses, we've got one. We're gonna subtract and we'll go ahead and type it in with the parentheses here. But because you have an even exponent, you could technically just leave that out if you want. All right, to the 10th power. And if we open parentheses, we should close them. All right, that becomes our top number. And we do need to multiply by two. We'll go ahead and just do that right now too. Okay, so that'll be our numerator, which is gonna be negative, let's see, 118,096, which we still gotta divide by four. And that will give us negative 29,524. All right, that should appear to be a very large number. Okay, it appears to be a very large number for the first 10 terms that you get from this series which only gets up to 54 within the first four terms. But as you multiply by three consecutively, it is gonna increase in size. So let me go ahead and just show you how those numbers increase. All right, so we started with two times that by three, you get the six and I'll leave out the negative because that's not really too important here. You're gonna realize that the number's getting really large. Okay, so you're gonna get a six, your third term's 18, your fourth is the 54, now here's your fifth, Here's your sixth, here's your seventh, here's your eighth, haven't quite gotten too big yet, eighth, there's your ninth, and you got your 10th. Okay, once you get to your 10th term, you're gonna realize how big the numbers are. Now, of course, as you're going through this, every other number is gonna be positive or negative, so we're not really adding like all of these terms together. We're gonna be adding some and then subtracting, okay? But in the end, we do end up with what would be a negative 29,524. Okay, so that would have meant that this was a negative number. That would have been a positive right before it. That would have been a negative. That would have been a positive, And we end up here. Wait, there